top of it, beautiful people. It is er, as it as it is the early morning as I'm recording this episode 34 of Rich Talks. It's currently 4:48 a.m. Pacific time. What's the date? October 4th, 2024. What a wild day, what a wild day. But nonetheless, what did I come to talk to you about today? It is the intersection of fate and free will. Yes, the age old debate between fate and free will. Which do you subscribe to? Do you believe in everything is destined? Or do you believe we have free will? Are we truly free when you really break it down to how we even have predetermined factors of things of like our genetics, our upbringing, our environment. Do these shape us? Therefore, we don't have as much free will as we thought. Or what if we bring in the realm of quantum physics and that we can alter our reality. If you ask me, I believe we're in the middle of both. I believe there's different parallels of the actual time that we are living. Meaning, for every action that you take, there are other predetermined outcomes that can happen after that one action that you take. So say for instance, you make a decision to go left. Now that you chose left, there are predetermined outcomes that can happen once you turn left. There's predetermined factors that will happen if you turn right. There are predetermined factors that will happen if you go straight. But you have the free will to choose if you go left, right, or straight. So I believe we are living in not multiple realities, but parallel realities of parallel universes. Or based on your upbringing, based on your predetermined factors that was already predetermined by the universe, you know, all that has a play in it. Once you pass that, now that's what comes into play, which will determine how you choose to live. I'm sorry, not how you choose to live, but what decision you will make. Almost like chess. If this person makes this move, then the game will, you know, start swaying this way. If this person makes this move, then it'll start swaying this way. And the reason why I say that is because it's clear as day for me. Because you can sit back and really see it. It's like, ah, if I wouldn't have made that mistake, then I could have did this, did this, did this, did this, did this, and I would have been over there. Or had I made this decision, this would have happened, this would have happened, this would have happened, this would have happened, this would have happened. Which is true, 
but all other points in that reality you would have had to make to come out you would have had to make specific choices for the outcome to come as you have seen it so yes that is true but then again you know certain aspects of it no And I think that's the, 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 the beauty of life. Is that no matter which direction or angle that you take, it's a new experience. I don't think there's no wrong or no right. It's just more experience. And I think sometimes the reason why people make bad or wrong decisions is because internally they still have more learning to do. Their soul is not ready for that next level. It's not ready to graduate. Therefore, it makes those decisions and aligns itself with those outcomes in order for it to continue to grow. So therefore, I believe our souls are leading the way on this quest of freedom versus determined fate. You know, if we look at somebody like a historical figure like Martin Luther King, right? And some people may say, Oh, it was his fate to, you know, go out like how he did. And then some will say, no, he chose that. He could have been a preacher or, you know, or done something, you know, a little bit less controversial. And he could have still been alive. But that wasn't the path that his soul was aligned on. So therefore, he kept making the actions and the choices that he did, which led him to where he was at. I'm not saying that that's a problem or anything like that, because we're grateful, but that's how it is. The actions that you take of the free will will then go down a path of the path that is already predetermined based off of that choice or action that you choose to complete or go about. Which is actually kind of wicked, kind of tricky when you think about it. Because for like every little like decision you can make, there's like billions and billions of outcomes that could be you know, like even as, as minuscule as like how you pivot your foot or how you land on your foot, you know, can like determine something is if you have like a ache in your leg 10 years from now or something, you know, <laughs> that minute. But then 10 years from now, you may think like, oh, it was destined for me to have these leg problems or something like that. But then again, once you really think about it, it's like, no, the little choices and actions of free will that you had of how you placed your foot on the ground or the shoes that you refused to throw away and get some new ones for support, that is coming back now. And those actions have now aligned with this reality that you are now living. And as I say, nothing is a mistake or nothing is. So when they say like, um, well, why don't you just make better choices? Or why did that person make this type of choice? Or move like this or this and this? And like I said, it's because their soul was aligned for the choices that they made. Their soul was not ready 
for that decision that could have put them on a better path or whatever. They weren't ready. The human conscious may have been, but their soul wasn't ready to graduate to that level. Their soul still needed to make the certain choices and decisions that it made in order for it to continue going down that path. This is why I don't beat people up so much when they make the type of decisions that they make or, you know, when people do you wrong in relationships and things of that sort, that's why it never turns out like that. What's good? How are you? Just, just checking out. All right. So, I'm sorry, I just got thrown off. So, yes. Are things predetermined? I believe there are millions and billions of outcomes. Ah, that's what I was talking about. Your soul not being ready. Okay, back. Yes. So, some people's soul may not be ready. This is why we don't beat up on people, you know, in relationships when they may do you wrong or da 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 da, da you know. Our human consciousness and our 3D, 3D consciousness and all that, we, we may want to. We may want to beat up on them, you know, and, and call them names and do all this stuff because they've done us wrong. But when you take a step back and you really analyze it and think about it, they probably did you a favor, but that's neither here nor there due to this conversation. But the thing about it is that they probably weren't ready. Their soul was not ready for that next level of life, that next level of the choices. Therefore, they did what they did. Like I said, that's why I don't try to villainize people or call people bad and da 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 da. Because when you take a step back, it was just they weren't ready. Therefore, their actions and things of that sort aligned with it, and the, the outcomes that happen happen. So now, that's when you see people who. Like, may go down a quote-unquote downward spiral, you know? And they may find themselves in a, a place where they may feel low or life, giving up on life or whatever, da 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 And that's when they look back and find the choices and actions that they may have led them to where they are. And that's when they may start making choices and actions in order to guide them to where they want to be. That's when their soul is ready. And that's when them choosing these certain actions will start aligning with different realities. And they'll start going in their favor. Because now they're ready to make those certain choices and actions. This is why they say you can't force people, you can't change people. They're going to change on their own. You know, this is exactly why. The soul has to do it. You can't do it. And sometimes even when you ask people about the decisions and choices that they make, right? Even if it's good choices, when you ask them about these choices and decisions that they make, sometimes these people can't even tell you, oh, this is why I chose this decision or this is why. They just did it. And that should tell you right there that a lot of these things is just your soul taking over. Your soul is doing the choice picking. It's not even you. You know, and that goes into where they say that we're not battling against flesh, flesh, but we're battling against spiritual, you know, we're battling against spirits. 
You know, it's not the people that's bad, it's the spirit. Well, I'm not even going to say bad in this context especially. It's not the spirit that we're battling against. I mean, the person that we're battling is against, it's the spirit. It's the soul. They may not be ready to make those decisions and things of that sort. So do we villainize it or demonize it? No. It's just like a kid. What if a kid makes a mistake? You don't villainize the kid or demonize the kid or anything of that sort. You have empathy for the kid and you allow the kid to grow. That's the same thing with people. You, you have empathy for the people and you allow them to grow. Especially when you know that the choices and the decisions they're making is based off of them not being ready to make certain decisions and actions to have certain outcomes. And that's okay. So do we have freedom or free will or is all this just predetermined? Morning. Morning. I believe like I said, it's in the middle of both. It's other factors that play a part of it. But people will say, well, why do good things happen to good people? You know? And to me, it's just a testament. Life is not going to be just, you know, you're going to have other factors. Just like the day, you have hot days, you have cold days, you have rainy days, snowy days, foggy days, all type of different days. Now, how do you choose to move when these outside forces play a part? It's the inevitable. So it's the same thing as being a good person or the same thing as being someone who, you know, is going down their path. They're going to be outside forces. I'm not going to dive super deep into what these outside forces are. You know, where if you believe in spirituality, it can be different spiritual entities or different spirits or different this, different that that's trying to play a factor to move you this way and move you that way because you've chosen certain actions. You know, say for instance, you've chosen to live a righteous life, so now there's different spirit realms and different things and that sort that's battling against you, you know, because you chose these righteous ways. You chose not to sign your name on the dotted line with the devil. So now the devil will send his minions, you know, versus if you align yourself with unrighteousness. Now, those minions may not happen, may not come apart, come about, but now other factors may play a part. Just like in life, if you choose to move to uh, Florida, now the fact is if you move into Florida, you're going to have to battle against hurricanes and raining days and this and this and this, versus if you move to a state like Arizona, you're going to have to battle against the heat. So if you choose a path of righteousness, choose the path of, you know, this and this and this, certain things are going to be playing a factor against. Versus if you choose these other decisions, these other things will happen to you. That's just the way it goes, from my belief. But you make your decision. You make your choice. Because if everything was completely predetermined, it would be no point in this. It would be no point in life. What would be the point if the outcome was already known? That would be a waste of resource. And if we know one thing, 
God in the universe is efficient. Everything has a purpose. So if all this was already written, if all this was already, then what would be the purpose? But to play devil's advocate, if all this was predetermined, then our actions were predetermined as well, of course, then that would just mean that we're just part of a program. Then the choices that you make that you believe were free will was already predetermined. So in that case, I would say it still doesn't matter. Because how would you have known? Say, for instance, you, you raise your right hand and say, oh, I made that decision. Well, if it was predetermined that you would raise your right hand, then how do you know if you made that choice? Hmm? How do you know if that was a choice that you specifically made because you wanted to, or if that choice was made because it was already predetermined by the universe that you were going to make that choice? Because the universe needed you to make that choice for whatever reason, whatever bigger picture that it had planned out. The great thing about this is that there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just how you choose to see life and how you choose to live life and how you choose to see your reality and how you come to grips with things and how you choose to sleep. But there's no right or wrong. I think that's the beauty of life. That's why I believe that it's not predetermined. I believe it's free will because if it was already predetermined, we would have instructions. Like when you buy a desk from Ikea. <laughs> you know, when you buy something from Ikea, what does it come with? Instructions. A predetermined way for you to put this desk together to get that desired outcome. Correct? When you buy anything, it comes with instructions on how to put it together to get that desired outcome. Life don't come with instructions. What instructions do we have? We don't have a guidebook. The only thing that we have is like a, and that such is a moral compass, is a soul. That's it. Other than that, you make those choices and decisions that you choose. When somebody wants a desired outcome, they tell you directly how to do something to achieve that desired outcome. And where's the desired outcome for this life? The Bible? That could be. But the reason why I say it may not be the Bible is because there's it's been written by man or rewritten by man. And there's so many different forms of versions and there's so many different forms and versions of religious text that all sway in the position of who's reading it based off of their background. But if that was the case, it would always be one written or something written in order for those of the modern times in order to receive it. And also that book or that religious text started at a certain date, but what were those people to do before that date? Meaning if this religious text came out in 2000, what did the people in the year 1999 and before live their life based off of? What were their instruction manuals? See, they don't have an instruction manual.
So that's why I don't necessarily say it's a, the Bible is the almighty religious text based on how we're supposed to live our life. More so than that soul that was given by God, that soul that was given by the divine that you utilize. And that will guide you if you're ready to make the decisions to go left, right, or straight. Almost like Neo in the Matrix. Neo is ready to take the red pill. And that altered his reality. If he wanted to take the blue pill, he would have stayed the same. That's an interesting topic. It really makes you think. But I believe topics like this, and when you go in depth, it allows you to do the main thing that we were supposed to do, which is really live and explore. And we, we were really just supposed to just live this life as much as possible. And that's what keeps this spinning. No more, no less. You just make the decisions and choices that you you know can see. That your soul is ready for. Everything else doesn't matter. Everything else doesn't matter. I feel like the moment that you start questioning your choices and decisions is the moment that your consciousness starts rising. So if you're someone who's always made choices and decisions that led them in a place where they didn't like where they were, the moment you start saying, the moment you start questioning those choices and decisions, like I said, that's the moment your soul starts rising. And that's the moment that reality will start altering and changing based on how you see yourself and now the new choices and decisions that you're making. That's why they say when you change your thought pattern, your reality changes. It's the same thing. Because when you change your thought pattern, that changes the actions and the decisions and the way you see life and your energetic frequency and all these things. And when you choose to change that, now your reality starts changing. Now, the things that you see, the things you come about, the people you cross, the ideas you come about, the places you go, the places you see, the people you see, the people you cross, all these things start changing. All free will. It's that, what's that saying? If for every action there's a reaction. So the action of your free will will have a reaction, which is the predetermined reaction for whatever action that is taken. That's a good one. For every action that you take, the reaction is just the predetermined reaction that has to come about. So to me, the only thing that's constant, or I'm sorry, the only thing that's predetermined is the actual reactions that will happen. You choose which door you want to walk in. Whatever door you choose to walk in, the outcome is set.
like I said, if you at the beginning, if you choose to go left, this is the outcome. If you choose to go right, that's the outcome. If you choose to go straight, there's the predetermined outcome. Now you have the free will to choose which direction you want to go. Again, free will versus fate. This was a good talk. Hope it could help somebody. This again, I'm sorry, again, this is episode 34 of Rich Talks. Y'all be safe. I love y'all. Love and blessings.